Okay, so this is just a short video on the 2021 release Wave 2 features, which have been available for early release. Um, these are now available or will be available around the beginning of October 2021. Okay, so advanced lookup capabilities for the model driven power apps. Um, this feature is enabled on any field which you have a lookup on, where one where you have a magnifying glass basically. Um, I'm just on a case form and obviously I'm using the customer field here which hopefully we all know looks up to accounts or contacts. So we click on the magnifying glass and you can see we've got this new option here, advanced lookup. As soon as we click onto this, you can see it will show you all the entities that are part of this relationship. So in this scenario we can look for accounts or we can click that and change to contacts. A um, couple of things we can do in here, we can search for a record, so if I wanted to search for a value. I could search and it would find the details. I can click into that. That will then load up and I can then preview that what that account looks like before I decide to add that against my case. Um, I can also, um, let's just get rid of that. You can also filter. So you can filter A to Z on most of these columns. You can click only show my records or you can add a new record. Again, it would allow you to enable a new record for the, the two tables that you've got over here as part of this lookup. So for now I'm just going to highlight this value and you can see it's selected and then I can click done. So that's the, uh, the advanced lookup capabilities. It just enables you to see more information before you pick a certain value for a field. One of the new features is the ability to easily share records. Um, it's a slightly improved UI. Um, what you can do like we used to do before, you can see we've got these little tick boxes now on views. Um, so I could select more than one row in a system view and by doing so I then get the share option in the ribbon. As soon as I click onto this you can see it pops up with this sort of UI here. Um, it's a lot quicker and a lot more responsive than it ever used to be as well. You've got the same ability to still search for a user or a team so I could pick a team from here. Equally I could pick or search for a user so I'll just pick Chris in this scenario. Once you've picked your users and teams they will appear down the right and then you can just tick each one, select each one and then grant the relevant permissions for each of these individual people or team that you need to share records for. Once you've done that you click share. It will now say it's been successfully shared to these people. There you go share completed successfully and then we can just close that down and these records have now been shared. The next new feature is multiple side panes. So the first thing to note, this does involve a bit of development, a bit of JavaScript, a bit of code at this point in time. Um, but essentially what you can do is, you can see here on the right hand side, I've just added four tabs. You can see if I hover over it, I've got Twitter, YouTube, I've got my activities and I've got my phone calls. As soon as I click onto one of these, it will expand and it will show me what I've basically added in is this side pane. So I've just got our Preact Twitter feed to hand at a click of a button over here. Um, I've got one of our YouTube videos. It might be that I need to watch this specific video when I'm on a certain form or something like that. We can set the triggers on these as well. So if you want these to always be here for all users, when we open the application, that's doable. We can also have triggers upon, if you click a button, then these appear on the right as well. Again, the triggers are down to individuals. Um, so we can have external sort of web data coming in um, and then of course the two down here is I've just got my activities. You can see it's just a view if I needed to change that and click all activities again I can and then in here I've just got my phone calls. You can see here's my phone calls. If I was to change that to say today or earlier there's a list of all my phone calls that need to happen today. When I click into one of these it will then show me all the details over here on the right hand pane. So you can see when the phone calls take place and I can action things from here in the normal manner. Again, if I don't need that, I can just close that off. I can then collapse that. You can see here, because I've picked either this view or whether it's due today or, you know, if I click away from that and I click back, it will also remember the filters and the view that I was previously on on these side panes. Again, really useful feature and I think this can give a lot of benefit to a lot of you guys out there. So um, we did do a previous video on this next feature, which is the advanced search. But just to let you guys know, as of October, when this is available for general release, um, this will now be enabled by default for every organization. So some of you might have already turned this on. For those of you who haven't, 
Um, basically what it is is it's the, the universal search bar will now be in the middle of the ribbon at the top. It doesn't matter which form, which entity you're in, it will always be in the top. As soon as you click into this and then you can see it will show you all of your recent activities that you've got um, and it will show you any of your recent searches as well. From within here you can then start typing a, a value so you can see if I start typing this it will then start showing you a few of these these values so it's, it's telling me that there's a there's a few contacts called John there's a prospect also with the word John in it um, and this is based on your search fields that you've set up at your organizational level. You've got a couple of these extra options in here as well sort of quick actions so if I search this, I've, I can quickly assign this record to somebody. I can share this record to somebody and I can email a link for this record to one of my colleagues as well. If I just click into this and then push enter, what it will then do is it will split these results out. It will show you all your top results of all these values again, where it's found the value John. Um, you can see up here, it will tell me that I've got 15 contacts that it's found one account, one competitor, one opportunity, one task. You can see if I click onto the 15 contacts, it will show me these. And you've got these quick actions here like you saw previous. Um, and if I click into the account, again, just to show you where this is pulling from, you know, it's not pulling from the account name, but it's found it because I've got, you know, the email field enabled in my search criteria on accounts table. It's found John over here. Okay, so the next feature I think is really quite useful and I think it's one of the best features of this release. It's the ability to add new columns to a system view on the fly. So you can see I'm currently in active cases system view. We get this little icon over here. As soon as we click into it, the column editor, what we can then do is you can see we can move these fields around if we need to. So I wanna put case number at the top and I wanna move status up next to case number. You can see currently case number is obviously second and status is down here in the background. If I apply that, what it will now do is it will move these columns around how I've basically done it over here once you've made any changes in this sort of column editor the first thing you can note is that you get a little asterisk on the actual system view itself if you was to navigate away from this view and go into another view so if i went into that view for example and then i came back into my view these changes will not be saved so it's it's a one-time thing that you can do on the fly um, which means you don't have to go to your administrator to make these changes to these system views all the time if you just want to export it, run a report, whatever. Um, the other thing you can do, obviously, is add additional columns. So you've got the ability to move the columns around that you just saw. But then up here, we've got the ability to add additional columns. When we click Add a Column, you can see I can then go and pick, say, maybe Case Type. If I click Close, you can see Case Type's now been added. So I might want to push that up the top as well. That will pull from any of the fields that have been enabled on the table that you're on. So on cases, this is every single field I've got on cases. We've also got the ability to click on related and then you can see it will show you any related tables based on the relationship that you've got to this table. So one of these might be say your account field using the customer field relationship and it might be that I want to put, I don't know, account number for example in as well. So I can pick account number click close and now you can see account numbers now available and what it will do is in brackets it will show you the relationship where this is pulling from so it's the customer field on the case form that I'm now pulling in and then I'll be showing you the account number from that customer that we've got again I can move these around put that at the top I can click apply and now you can see I've got my account number in here got my case type field in here as well got the asterisk so from a visual point of view we can see that there have been a few changes made to this so the next feature is sort of a new app experience for editing multiple records in one go. Um, you can see I can just tick a couple of these sort of cases from this view. And like before, we've got the, the edit option in the ribbon. So when I click on this, it used to load a main form and it's quite slow. It's now quite responsive. It will load up your form as it appears um, on the main form itself. So you can see I'm on the summary tab. If I want to go to the details tab or if there's any fields in the header I want to change. So you know where the fields are on your form. It's a lot easier to find. If I need to then just come in here and say these will come via the phone. I want to change the origin. I click save and it gives you a little progress and it's telling you it's saved those records. A lot quicker, a lot more slick than it ever used to be. So hopefully you can you can edit mass a lot quicker than you ever used to be able to. The next feature Microsoft have released is the ability to remember grid view settings um, while you're in a session. 
Um, I know a lot of people have been crying out for this in the past, um, but they've actually now released it. When I say per session, what I mean is I'm obviously logged in as my user today into Dynamics. Um, what you can see here is I've just moved a few of my, my column headings. Um, so you can see it's quite common that you might want to be able to see that label. So you tend to just go in here and go into a system view and adjust it accordingly as a user. You can see I can move all of these around so I can see a bit more space here, see the labels. Um, and this one over here obviously has got a lot of white space. I now probably want to remove that. Now in the past you would have done this and then you would navigate you know, to another view for example. So if I go again to that and it would have lost your changes. So what they've now done is given us the ability to remember those changes. Now if I was to log out of this session and log back in, it wouldn't retain these. So the view would still be back to the system default view that we had. But it's just really useful to be able to adjust some of these column headings and it can remember it while you're logged in in that session. Okay, and finally just to wrap up a few things that Microsoft have done to just improve the experience. Um, they've now removed the legacy web client. I know you could turn this on and off in the admin sort of portal before, but now they've removed it completely. Um, by default, this will now be the thing in October going forward. Um, they've increased page support up to 400%. So if you're using different browsers and you want to zoom in and out to see sort of larger fonts, they've increased that to 400% zoom. They've made a few improvements to keyboard shortcuts. So I won't be able to name all of them, but if you're using keyboard shortcuts, there's a few extra shortcuts they've added as well. Um, they've improved the styling on scroll bars. So what they've done is tried to make Dynamics consistent with Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. So you shouldn't notice a difference with the styling on any of the scroll bars. The application should look very similar across the board. And finally, they've updated some of the messages that, that appear in Dynamics. Again, this is to align with their Microsoft Fluent styling across all applications. Um, so yeah, if you like what you've seen today, please feel free to get in touch. If you've got any questions regarding release wave two, um, feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, like this video if you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to the Preact YouTube channel if you want to see more videos about Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform in the future.